What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time at Major Hardware, maybe consider subscribing, and we'll see you in some future videos. So what do we have going on today on Major Hardware? So we have my first PC I've ever built. Well, I didn't build it. CyberPower PC did, but I never had any issues with it. Uh, I picked this up in 2012 from CyberPower. Uh, and what we want to look at, or at least I want to look at, is the water cooling solution that they installed or that I picked out and they installed. However, you know how it works. But this has a 120 all-in-one liquid cooler from Corsair that has been working every single day since the day I bought it, way back in 2012. So my question is, what exactly is in a water cooling loop that's this old? Um, for the most part, you know, on, at least looking from the outside in, I've never taken it off, but it's exactly how it was when it was put together way back then. But from the outside, it looks relatively in good shape. Uh, the pump does make a little more noise than it used to. I First thing we're going to do is we're going to take it out, we'll take a look at it, and we'll take it apart for as much as we can. We'll take a look at the liquid inside, if there is any left. Uh, we'll take a look at what's in that liquid. Is it clear? Is it murky? Is it... Uh, who knows? Well, who knows what's in there? Literally, it's been, been years since it was put together. And if we can't take it apart, well, I got my Dremel. We'll cut it apart. This is a Corsair 120 from 2012 we were talking about a minute ago. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get some, some pump sound on there. I don't know. My power supply that's... I didn't think honestly it would make it this long, but to its credit, it's still kicking it is louder than anything. So I'll stick the mic in there, see if I can get some, some audio and we'll see if we can hear anything. Now that we have the cooler off, let's see what the thermal paste that old Sour Power put on there back then looked like. Uh, for the most part, seems like they did a pretty good job. There's a, they, they didn't, definitely didn't skimp on the amount of thermal paste applied. But to the credit, it worked out great. All right, now we got everything out. Let's take a look at this water block. Um, there you can see the thermal compound left over from what was applied back at CyberPower in 2012. Uh, pretty hard now. Uh, but they didn't they didn't skimp on it. There's a there's a lot on the block itself. Uh, the, the, you know, the lines though, they're, they're not like the braided lines you get now. They're these are all plastic. And you can hear, I don't know if you can hear, we'll see if we can get close enough to the mic, but there's there's something in here still. There's still water, but there's a lot of air. All right, we can't pull it off, but we can cut it. So what we're going to try to do is get all the water, for the most part, into the reservoir. So we'll see if we can get get it down, most of it down there, and then we can cut it, try to drain it. And let's pour it all into here. Okay, well, it looks like they didn't just use water. It looks like there's some antifreeze in here or something. Definitely looks like antifreeze. Color-wise, smells like garbage. Let's get it all out of there. All right, so now that we have the green goo out of the system, uh, based on its color, its smell, and you know how it feels, uh, I'm betting it's antifreeze. Uh, but if you can see in the bottom there when I slosh it around, See those little black dots? That's everything that came out of the system. Let's see if we can zoom in there. All right, now that we're zoomed in, you can see them a little better, so let me, let me give it a little wiggle. See all that all that junk? So be it metal shavings from the motor, the pump, or plastic, from the tubing, or the impeller, or, you know, something from the radiator. Who knows what it is, but that, I'm betting they didn't put it in the system. And I don't know how much fluid came in the system when they originally put it together, but that's all that came out of it. Just that little bit that's in that bowl. All right, so uh, the thermal comp is making a mess, but other than that, let's start taking this baby apart and see what we got. Seems like it's still working. Ta-da! Now we got the lid off after all the shenanigans. We're gonna take a look so you can see the PCB on top block on the bottom we're going to take apart take these four screws out and see what's underneath it I know I'm holding on to this holding on don't let me repeat it so 
So here's our water block, see all our fins in there. So we're focused up, we'll try to get a closer shot in a minute. Uh, there's definitely some gunk in there. And we'll see how this is going, so. There's our pump. So here we got everything apart. All the screws out. The water block, fins on it, the pump, and the housing. Uh, pump doesn't look too bad. Still spins, spins nice. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's bound up anyway. Blade, nothing in the pillars chipped or anything like that. Uh, the block though, the block is where you can see all the black on the inside there. That's kind of just all this bunch of all that stuff we saw in the water that's kind of gunk in there. But for corrosion wise, there's nothing really, I don't see anything in there. So let's start out by taking a look at this water block. So uh, you can see right off the bat that this area in the middle is clean. Well, just for scale. So what I'm pointing with on these veins is a needle. So that's how small these veins really are. But the center here is clean because as this, how this pump works is the water is forced down the middle here and it goes out either side. So as the water is moving fast and at high pressure, the, the sediment and dirt can't really build up. But as it slows down towards the edges, you can kind of see where the dirt builds up. And then down here, you see a bunch of, well, you see metal shavings and metal pieces everywhere, but this looks like where the majority of them ended up. So this appears where the, uh, well, it looks maybe the, this, see how this is the biggest side here? So this looks like this would be where our intake was. So the water came in this way, moving the fastest, and then it moved down. And as it pushed all the metal shavings to one end, this appears to be the spot that was also down in the case. So if you imagine how it was sitting in the case, this was down. And at the end, so the water was moving the slowest and gravity pulled all of these metal pieces down here uh, over time. Also, you can see how this water block was made. So you got this chamfer cut into this block back here. So what they did is they had a tool that would shave a piece of copper and bend it up, shave a piece of copper and bend it up. So this block was originally all smooth like that. And that tool came in there, bent a piece of copper, flipped it up, and then did that all the way across. And then you're, what you're left is at this end, you have you know, a piece of copper, or a big channel left where that tool came down and bent that last vein up. Uh, right here looks like there was a mistake made. So that just looks like they set, you know, they CNC these channels in here for a return. Uh, it looks like they just had the CNC set in the wrong spot and came down and noticed it, stopped, came, fixed it, made that channel, made that channel, and they were able to just save this block. Uh, didn't hurt me, so the block worked fine over the years, but you can just see how much dirt and metal has built up in these channels over time. Uh, this, the gasket though, I mean, nothing looked like it leaked. The copper looks like nothing really wore off of it. You know, it does have a lot of dirt and metal that I assume came from the radiator, but like this, you know, that, that gasket still feels soft. It doesn't, I don't see any cracks in it. And the water block was still working when we took it apart. So, so this is a centrifugal pump. Uh, it would have spun this direction. As it spun, water would have been drawn in through the middle and thrown out to the side as these impeller wheels went around. And then that water thrown out to the side would have exited through our housing into our block we just looked out. But for the most part, this looks like it's in good shape. I don't see anything wore off. I don't see any wear or any chips. Uh, and everything spins pretty good still, so. All right, so here's our pump housing. If you remember, the motor sat in there just like that. Um, and as we take a look at this, you can see that Here's where your water, let me my pin real quick, my needle. Your water would have came in there, ran down the center, exited through that center right there. It's hard to see, but there is a, there's a small hole right here at the bottom where your water would have came in through intake up into our impeller, and then that would have been thrown out to the edge of this pump wall, and then it would have exited through that little hole right there. And if we flip it over, put in our gasket, All right, so on the back side, you can see that the water would have came in right here, 
and then it would have been pushed down this silicone shallow. I think this is silicone. It feels like silicone. So the water would have came up here, and then it would have been pushed down this channel where it exited and went, you know, either way through our water block that we looked at a minute ago. And that's this area right here is where that clean, clean spot on our water block came from. And I assume all that particulate ended up right around here. If this was the bottom. This would have been the where the water was moving the slowest, lowest pressure, and this would have been where gravity was pulling it. But if we look underneath this silicone gasket, you can see where the water actually entered this housing. So here you see that gap that's on the other side where we just looked at a minute ago. So the water came in through here, ran down this channel, exited, and then moved down either side of our water block, cooling our water block, and then eventually making its way to the return where it exited out and then went to our radiator, back through the loop and then came back to our pump. And as we look at this block, I don't see, everything looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't see any evidence of the gasket being chipped or tore, no tearing. I don't see anything left behind. It doesn't look like there's any leaking anywhere. So for the most part, this housing and pump and water block's in pretty good shape, although it's extremely dirty. Let's see if we can't get this wa this radiator opened up so the plan here so as you can see i don't know it's hard to see if you can see on the camera or not there's a little indent there so i assume that the water moved around this radiator in this manner one side or the other camera which side is which came in one side and went down the other so i'm going to try to cut these edges off we'll see if we can see through the radiator and then we'll see what's going on, on either side here so let's clear some space out we'll see if we can't not break anything So we got the radiator open uh, after some long fought battle, but you know, for the most part, it's just a radiator. There's not much to it. Uh, it's hard to see, but if you can as I move that, you can look down each vein in the radiator, each channel, uh, and they're all pretty much clear. I mean, I got really close up in there. And there might be a few pieces of dirt in there, but it's hard to tell what's what was existing and what came from my uh, operation here but you know both sides are the same there's no I didn't find any like sea monsters or anything crazy in there and then you can see how it's channeled so you gotta you gotta right there's a stop so water can come in one side it can't go across it has to go down through the radiator this side's open it can come out moves down here enters the radiator again and it goes back down out here and then it's gonna go into our block loop we looked at but for the most part that's you know it's pretty clean compared to the water block but that's to be expected uh, the channels that the water passes through here are much larger than in the water block so if anything's gonna get stuck anywhere it's gonna be exactly where we don't want it thanks again for watching that's it for today I uh, hope you enjoyed what we did here today when we we murdered this innocent water block but we did it for science like always, if you uh, haven't subscribed or you enjoyed what you've seen here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in our next video.